While nuclear power has never dominated the global energy market, it has been an integral power source for 31 countries around the globe, supplying power to millions from over 427 operational plants. In 2013, the energy source was in decline by 7%. But is there still a future for nuclear? Icosa Media talked with two innovative companies at Sarah Week working to make nuclear both safer and smaller. New Scale was formed back in 2007 to pursue small modular reactors. And what a small modular reactor is, as compared to a large light water reactor, is it's much smaller, about 1 20th the size, and it's integral, meaning a lot of the parts that are usually separated by uh, distance and connected by pipes in a large reactor are actually integrated into a single modular unit. What that allows to happen is to be able to manufacture the full new scale power module and its containment in a factory setting, which is far preferable to doing so in the field where you have challenges of weather and other changing conditions. Since Fukushima happened, there's been a large concern in nuclear about you know, what is the impact of the operating plants and the new designs. Our plant is designed to safely shut down and maintain that shutdown status with no addition of water, no outside power or batteries, and without any operator action. So the new scale concept for its first plant is to have a building that's designed to house 12 modules. But whether you put all 12 modules in there at one time or you do it in stages of two, four, or six, is really a question for the customer because many customers don't need to have 2200 megawatts, which is a large plant, all at once. They need to have 45 megawatts or 90 megawatts per year coming on. And our module is 45 megawatts in size, but a plant can be up to 540 megawatts, which gets you to a large uh, light water reactor size plant. Generally, where you have the need for smaller amounts of power, they don't have access to large gas pipelines or cheap fuel supplies to make that happen. For example, in Guam, their total demand is maybe 500 megawatts, and they're reliant 100% on fuel oil, and that's very expensive. They pay you know, two to three times what we pay in the U.S. for power. But our first emphasis will probably be in the existing markets because there is overhead associated with just having nuclear power of a regulatory framework and the um, uh, infrastructure to support that from a, a person standpoint as well as from a regulatory standpoint. But clearly as we get adoption in the rest of the uh, developed market, it moving over into the uh, developing world is a, a huge opportunity because it's of a size that fits nicely into their need. And while some reactors are built to be small, this next innovation is geared towards safety and reusable fuel options. Unlike other fast reactors, TWRs can reuse their fuel without reprocessing. Other kinds of reactors require very complex infrastructure with steps such as enrichment and reprocessing that are costly and involve transporting large amounts of sensitive material around the world. TerraPower's design eliminates most of these requirements. By enabling the use of depleted uranium as fuel and simplifying the fuel cycle, TWRs make nuclear energy safer, cleaner, and more affordable. Uh, I'm John Gilliland, I'm CEO of Terra Power. We're agnostic first, that if the market speaks and says we want little reactors, that's fine. But typically, uh, not typically, in our case, we were holding fast to using the uranium fuel of the sort we are so it can, energy can be available to everybody, not having to reprocess, being able to leave the fuel in the reactor for super extended periods. Uh, Etc. All those five things cannot be met with light water reactors, period, no matter what their size. This reactor magically appearing before your eyes, I wish it were this easy to build, but I have a couple of major points. From the inside and the outside, it looks very much like reactors that have already been built. Most reactors today are uh, cooled with water. This one is not. It's cooled with liquid metal, sodium, and that has all kinds of advantages. It's not a new thing. Uh, our concept right now, for example, uses what are called inherent safety features. It's inherent in the physics. As the reactor heats up, it shuts itself down and stays in a safe condition for as long as you want. The basic fuel is depleted uranium. You know, when you mine uranium, you throw out about 90-something percent of it it, it never goes in the reactor. In the enrichment process, you throw a lot of stuff in the backyard. That's U-238 dominantly. It's the part of 
the uranium uh, resource that we've had trouble finding a use for. But in fact, uh, this particular reactor, once it's up and running, once it's been lit up with some enriched uranium, it can then run, in theory, for hundreds of years on a large load of fuel. One of the key findings we had with this concept is that it's capable of operating at higher temperatures and thus has a, a, a greater intrinsic efficiency for the production of electricity. The same physical sized object, the same size of reactor, costs about the same amount of capital funds. On the other hand, it produces about 20 percent more electric energy. Other countries are not so endowed as the United States, and so this reactor will probably be built first in other countries. The reason this export is looked upon favorably is because it eliminates the need for an infrastructure. The problem that most countries have is they don't have the infrastructure to handle their fuel supply or their energy de independence depends upon having enrichment, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this is, no, you buy the reactor and the fuel and you hire other people to run it. And then the financing is something which I think the world will have to contribute to, no matter what form of nuclear or what form of energy it is, there's a, there's a kickstart cost here. Finally, it, or because there is so much fuel, I'll tell you about, available, you don't need to reprocess. And that's important. If you're going to deploy a reactor which you can use to help the two billion people on Earth rise out of poverty, because of course that's the key to well-being. If you're going to do that, you, you want to have a reactor which uh, does not require, in the long run, enrichment facilities, does not require reprocessing and the separation of plutonium to ensure a fuel supply. And this concept does not require either. For more information about these two innovative companies changing the future of nuclear energy, visit New Scale Power and TerraPower online. <laughs>